Keyboards are often thought of as the standard three-row QWERTY layout. Everything from typewriters, to personal computers, to phone keyboards, to the touchscreen revolution we find ourselves in today, few people have really challenged the QWERTY layout and succeeded. So what happens when a modern day developer tries to challenge this paradigm and change the way we use keyboards on our touchscreen devices? Well in this case, you get minimum. A very minimal keyboard that provides a very efficient alternative to the standard layout. Minimal keyboard, maximum results. Let's go. So the goal of the minimum keyboard is to provide an alternative to the standard layout that is not only efficient but helps save screen real estate. Now with a 5.5 inch phone myself, screen wise, I do appreciate this effort because it allows me to enjoy the large screen that I have and get a little bit more out of it. Now whether or not that's a good or a bad thing is completely up to you, but like I said, for myself, I personally enjoy the effort. Now when and if you first pick up minimum, it's going to feel weird. There's no getting around it. The first time I picked up and tried minimum, it was very strange and it was a unique experience. There really is nothing like it because you're just used to having that three row layout we mentioned earlier and they crammed it all into one row essentially. Now it's not necessarily the fact that it's in one row that makes it a good keyboard. It's the fact that the word prediction is absolutely outstanding. The goal of minimum, one of the goals, is that you should never have an incorrect word suggestion again or at least less likely to have one. In its current state that doesn't quite hold true but you have to remember that it's a 1.0 beta release meaning that the developer knows it's not what they want it to be completely but they're allowing people to test it out in a functional mode a functional version so that they can get feedback to see what it is they need to change and as it is I still think it's a very usable and quite fun experience so with that growing trend I mentioned earlier about smartphone screens getting bigger and bigger comes the problem of one-handed use. No longer, at least for all phones, is it possible to use them one-handed. The minimum doesn't solve that problem, but it sure helps. I'm not going to tell you that it's perfectly easy to use this phone texting or typing one-handed, but it is a lot easier than it used to be. You don't have to reach all the way across diagonally to type a certain letter or number. And as geometry would show you, you know, diagonally is going to be longer than straight across. So let's take a minute to talk about this spectacular word prediction that I mentioned earlier. I'm not quite sure how they do it, and it almost seems like magic, but somehow, 90 to 95 percent of the time, this keyboard, in 1.0 beta, mind you, is able to predict what I'm trying to say. And it kind of spooked me out a little bit, because with such a weird layout, I was honestly expecting... I don't know, I, I guess just not to be as accurate as I was used to. I, I used Swift Key 4 and I wasn't expecting the accuracy to live up to that and it's pretty darn close. To type a word, you pretty much just have to get in the general direction and it knows what you want to say, which is kind of spooky in itself. Now not all the predictions are perfect, I mean no keyboard is perfect, especially when you're talking about word prediction. Because we've all had that one text, or that one email, or that one message where one word came out funky and the whole message just got thrown out of context, or was just butchered in general. But it's just the fact that it's so accurate in its current baby state that I think it's so impressive. I mean, this thing is still in beta, and it's good, and it's usable, and it's probably going to be my main keyboard. The fact that it's that good at such an early stage is rather impressive. This has a lot of room to grow and I'm excited to see where it grows. So you can change the different settings to make the keyboard bigger or smaller or add a keyboard like I did here. So let's go over the basic functionality of it. If you press and hold any key, it's going to show you the suggested letters. And they're going to kind of pop up and then you can scroll your finger up to view different uh, non-letter keys. You can swipe to your right to add a space. You can swipe to your left to delete a word. You can swipe diagonally to the right up and you'll get what's the equivalent of the enter key and then you can swipe diagonally, diagonally to the left and you'll get the settings. 
within the settings you can mess with everything like I told you before vibrate on touch um, you know height length space all kinds of things and that's pretty much it it's a really simple keyboard to use you can hit the one two three button on top so what do I want to see improved in the next versions of minimum well I want to see first and foremost better word prediction it's not bad by any stretch it's very very good but as with every keyboard it has room to grow it's not perfect but you won't find a perfect one I want it to be just a tad more accurate and a tad more forgiving and I know it's difficult to appeal to everybody's wants and needs because everybody has different phones, fingers, you know, typing types. It, there's just a lot of variables. For my taste, I would like that. The biggest thing that I want to see is a way to type a word that isn't in its dictionary easier. I find it very difficult to type a word that's not in there because you have to very precisely and slowly type in the letters specifically. One of my friend's names is Cody, with a K, and for whatever reason the dictionary doesn't know that. Now you can add it to that dictionary, but it's a, quite a bear to do that the first time. And it doesn't always recognize it on the first try. It's a very intelligent keyboard, and after it sees that you use one or two particular words a couple times, it will automatically throw it in the dictionary for you, but I'd like to see some form of an easier method to add words or to type words that aren't already known because it's quite a pain and it's very difficult to do at this point in time. That being said, I realize it's going to be not the easiest thing to do because off the top of my head I don't really know a way that that could be done, but hey, I'm not the developer. That's why it's in beta. I'm giving my feedback. So what are my final thoughts on Minimum? I think it's a very well thought out and very well put together keyboard. It's weird at first. It's, f it's very weird at first, but it's very good once you give it a chance. You just got to give it that chance. The first night I used it, mm, I, I questioned continuing using it, but after I, I used it for a full 24 hours roughly, I was really glad I did. Because with a little bit more practice, I really think it's going to become my main form of communicating on you know any sort of touchscreen device. All in all, I would highly, highly, highly suggest giving it a try. You know, you don't have to keep it, but these guys are onto something here, and I would not. It would not surprise me if, in the near future, we start seeing, if not knockoffs, um, some improved forms of this, and potentially becoming one of the main forms of typing. I don't think it's ever going to quite take over QWERTY because it is convenient and it is nice and it is just always been. And you know, we're a very traditional society. But I do think that at some point it could stand close to it. Well there you have it. You have a look at the brand new minimum keyboard. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching it. Um, give me a like, subscribe down below. Throw a comment down below. I want to see what other people think about this because it's still brand new. It's only a couple days old. So I really want to see what other people think about it. Am I crazy? Do other people think it's good too? You know, I just see the potential. It's not perfect. I never said it was perfect, but I see good potential. So let me know what you think down there. Um, hopefully, they'll throw out an update relatively soon that, that addresses some of the problems that I mentioned. Um, most importantly, voice support. There's no support for that yet. I'm not quite sure why, but there isn't. Um, I'm going to throw a link for the, for the download also down below. So uh, there you guys go. You can even give it a try yourself. Again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. See you later.